Okay, we need to talk about something openly, like mature, free-thinking adults, which will immediately provoke the close-minded children of the internet, who will immediately dislike this video. But we need to talk about the Stadia Good Stuff event that happened this past week. Before I'm pegged as a shadow fanboy who just hates on Stadia, let me just clarify, I am a big supporter of Stadia. I've been a pro subscriber since day one, and when I poke fun, it's out of love, because I want to see the service succeed, because in terms of technology, Google Stadia is a great example of how seamless cloud gaming can be. And when one of these services succeed, they all succeed. That said, I believe what we saw this week was Stadia falling victim to their own marketing once again. So a quick recap for anyone that missed it. Uh, this week, Google held their free day event in which we got free playable demos, Pac-Man Mega Tunnel Battle, Humankind and Immortals Phoenix Rising. These are all playable for any Stadia user for the next few days. And then for the announcements in between, we got a release date for Jedi Fallen Order, being the 24th of November, the announcement of Hello Engineer, a sandbox game from the Hello Neighbor franchise coming in 2021, a DLC with new characters and challenges for Orcs Must Die Free, the announcement of Ark Survival Evolved, an action-adventure survival game coming to Stadia Pro subscribers again in 2021, the announcement of Young Souls, a beat-em-up RPG game coming to Stadia in 2021, <laughs> and the announcement of Phoenix Point, a sci-fi strategy game coming to Stadia, you guessed it, in 2021. So let's start off, let's talk positives. Playable demos coming to all tiers of Stadia players, not just pro subscribers like the free play days is a great move. It should absolutely continue because it feels inclusive and it gives people who may not have otherwise considered Stadia as a platform a chance to test it out, see the benefits of launching games instantly and playing them across multiple devices. Next, I am all for game announcements. Uh, one of the negatives I feel that gets thrown around a lot about Stadia is their smaller library, with services even like Microsoft Game Pass, Ultimate and Amazon Luna launching with more titles than Stadia has managed to accrue in its year of existence. So more games is a big deal and it's good to see. Unfortunately, I think about there I kind of run out of positives, so uh, let's get into it. The Good Stuff event was a rebranded Stadia Connect. When you add up the length of these three videos across the three days, it equals the length of their previous Connects. And I think they have some bad branding with the Connect events because of overhyping them in the past and under-delivering. So their solution to that appears to have been to call it something else, stretch it out over three days, overhype it, and then ultimately under deliver. When we get into the crux of it, the majority of the games announced are not arriving until sometime in 2021, not even early 2021, just a date in 2021, meaning other than the demos, which are available for the next you know, few days, the event delivered very little in terms of new content for Stadia players to jump into right now. And finally, we've been beating around it, so let's address it. In a three-day event, there was zero mention of delivering the long list of overdue features, which many players have been promised. Most notably, let's talk about Uplay Plus integration, which has been promised to be delivered in 2020. Last week, we saw the announcement of 11 Ubisoft titles coming to the Stadia platform, which looked like a pretty good indication of its announcement, especially since we don't really have that long left of 2020. So we only really have three outcomes for Uplay Plus at this point. One, there's going to be some other event held between now and the end of the year to announce it. Number two, it gets shadow dropped and we get a blog post update telling us it's there and to go for it. And it will be completely deflating what a pretty big deal it should be. Or number three, it's not arriving in 2020, which means that, that communication needs to come out sooner rather than later. If the internet has taught me anything, you do not want to piss off a group of gamers. And of course, we're waiting on a large number of other features, messaging, stream connect in more titles, and most importantly, in my opinion, is the ability to live stream to their own platform, YouTube. With Amazon Luna ramping up, they are absolutely utilizing Twitch as the golden marketing opportunity that it is, and having the community sell the platform for them. For Stadia players, unless you have an existing streaming setup, which kind of defeats the purpose of using Stadia in the first place, there's no way to share your experience on the very site that's owned by the platform that you're playing the game on. <laughs> so am I keeping my Stadia Pro subscription? Absolutely. Like I said, I want to see this platform succeed. 
I'm not just out here bashing it and saying it's doomed like a lot of cloud gaming haters, I'm giving constructive criticism. And speaking of constructive criticism, uh, I think it's fair for the entire internet to tell creative director Alex Hutchinson at Stadia Games in Montreal to go fuck himself. <laughs> Let me explain. In case you missed it, the hot take from the mind of this creative genius is that content creators and streamers should be paying royalties to game publishers for playing their games, likening it to the recent Twitch clampdown on copyrighted music. It is extremely unfortunate that this blew up on the same day Stadia were having their Good Stuff event, as this tweet is anything but. <laughs> so much so, a statement has even been issued stating, the recent tweets by Alex Hutchinson do not reflect those of Stadia, YouTube, or Google. In fact, their views are better summed up by Ryan Wyatt, head of gaming for YouTube, who stated, we believe that publishers and creators have a wonderful symbiotic relationship that has allowed a thriving ecosystem to be created, one that has mutually benefited everyone. YouTube is focused on creating value for creators, publishers, and users. All ships rise when we work together. Now, we just need a gentle reminder to Alex that the internet is the internet and removing Stadia from your bio and adding all opinions my own after the damage has been done is about as useful as a bag of dicks. Basically, every day Twitter will have a main character and your goal in life is to never become that main character. Obviously, everything we've talked about in this video has been my opinion. I, I just sound like Alex's bio now, but, uh, but I'd love to hear from you in those comments down below. Do you agree with some of the things I've said? Do you hate the words coming out of my stupid face? Let me know. But if you did enjoy the video, you found it somewhat helpful, a like rating would be appreciated. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe to the channel, turn on those notifications so you don't miss the next video. Hope everyone's staying safe out there. And as always, I shall see you in the next one.